And uh, the main thing is I want to talk about uh, uh, vocoders and autotune. I want to get to autotune and Melodyne. That's where we're going to get to eventually. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into some of the stuff I showed you all the other day where I put some harmonies onto a vocal track. And I kind of just did it real quick. But today I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive into it to show you really how to use autotune, how to use uh, Melodyne. So, but we're going to start off with vocoders because all this stuff really kind of comes from vocoders and the talk box and stuff like that. Um, we're not going to talk about the talk box too much just because I don't have one. Uh, but vocoders are fairly easy to show online. And before we do that, though, I want you to go to, or I want to show you a place called Tal Plugins. Let's see. Yep, here you go, Tal Software. And this is. Uh, this guy makes these plugins, been making them for a long time, and they're used in a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of good free ones up here. So we're gonna go in here and click on this. Go to plugins. And all the free ones are down here. And the one I recommend to pick up, there's actually two that are amazing. Uh, this chorus is unbelievable. The vocoder is fine. And if you don't have a vocoder and you're using Pro Tools, there's very few vocoder options out there. Um, the reverbs, I haven't really checked out the reverbs or the filter too much. Although this filter looks pretty cool. Looks like it's got like a envelope generator in it as well. Um, And then he's got some stuff you can pay for as well uh, that you can buy. That and it sounds it sounds good. I mean, it's not super expensive. Let's see how much does this cost. If I click buy now, twenty five bucks for this uh, dub delay. And and like I said, this stuff's really good. Um, he he had made an old dub delay type of effect that's no longer supported. Uh, it's down here in the bottom. And it was it was good stuff. It sounded sounded really good. I've had all this stuff at one point. This electro thing here. Okay, so no OS X sixty four bit support. Yeah, so it's not you can't use it in modern operating systems. But uh, but this stuff here, the noise maker is a decent synth, and the uh, chorus LX is great. I use that all the time, and the vocoder is what I'm going to be using today. So that's why I wanted to bring y'all here and show you this. And I'll stick this link into the chat as well. There we go. Cool. So that's that. I'm going to close this down. I'm going to close this down as well. All right, let's go in here and take a look at this. So first of all, um, actually, before we do that, let's go open up the notes. There we go. Sorry. We're going to come back to the Melodyne stuff and talk about vocoders first. Okay, so a vocoder basically what happens is it allows you to sound, to use a sound to manipulate the properties of another sound. It's usually used for voice stuff, and if you watch the video, you'll see why. Uh, people, but you can use it on drums, you can use it on synthesizers, other things, but voice is the way that it kind of is used a lot. And basically, with this, you have here's the vocoder, the free one that I just showed you where the link was, and you have a, a carrier and a modulator. And the carrier is the the signal that carries the sound, and the modulator is the signal that kind of changes the envelope and the properties of the sound. So you would use your synthesizer as a carrier. The synthesizer is what we're going to actually hear, and then the voice is what kind of manipulates that sound. It's the modulator. It modulates the sound. So what you're hearing is you're hearing it, it ends up sounding like a synthy 
vocal and I'm just gonna play it real quick here's here's what I did so what I've got here is um, let me just set this to the output real quick so if I solo this out hey check one two that's what I'm gonna do right now hey check one two that's what I'm gonna do right now hey all right so you can hear it's just like this two, that's me what. just talking into my microphone here hey check hey check just make one, sure two that's what I'm gonna do okay and then I've got the synth line over here. Nothing super fancy there. I've got, it's just a vacuum synth that comes with Pro Tools and I can change. And change things around. Right, so you can hear. So I can change some stuff around. It's just a synth. No big deal there. So what I can do though is I can use my vocoder to kind of combine both of these and get a new sound. And it turns me into a robot. Cool. All right. And so that's what we can end up with. And that's what we're going to get to here eventually. And I just wanted to show you that just to start off. And then we're going to take a look at things that are happening within these, like what's going on to make this happen. So that's what we've got here. We've got a synth and a voice equals amazing new sound. Oh my gosh, crazy, crazy talk. So you've got here <clears throat> the carrier, which is the synthesizer, and then the original sound of the modulator, which is your voice, drums, whatever, going through the vocoder, and then you end up with your final modulated sound here. So now the way this works in Ableton Live and a lot of like, uh, like the way that I've seen this work with other vocoders is that you put the vocoder onto the vocal track itself. So that's what I have outlined here. Um, there used to be a vocoder. I don't know if it's still a thing called Orange Vocoder. Let's see if that's still a thing actually. Um, and that's one that I had like a long time ago. I, I doubt it's still around though. Let's see. Plug in. Is it still a thing? New plugin boutique, the vocoder, orange vocoder, 10th anniversary. Wow. Oh, they're still selling it. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's the, this says it's the classic software vocoder plugin. Yep, that is true. That is certainly true. It's the one that I had a long time ago, and I, I never, when I got my computer set up again, I never reinstalled it. I should go back and look and see if I still got the installer for that. Uh, the, uh, the, if I can figure out how to install that now. Um, but basically, uh, that one went straight onto the, straight onto the track. And then you ran another synth or something through that. Uh, what this one is doing, the Tau one is doing is a little bit different and I don't have that outlined here in the notes for you, but I'm going to go through how to set that up. So basically, uh, you have your, in, your uh, vocoder plug in into your vocal track or onto an aux track as you're going to see in a second. You route the synth into the vocoder and you route the vocal into the vocoder or if it's on the track directly, you just let it go. You play both at the same time and then you'd be amazed because it's pretty awesome stuff. Okay, so let's see how this one sets up here. So what I've got here is I've got my vocal and I've got my instrument track. So I'm going to rename this one synth and I've got my vocal over here. And I got my vocoder. And this is how we have to have it set up with this towel vocoder. And the reason why is because the towel vocoder, uh, it's, it has a, a synthesizer built into it. And I'll show you how to use a synthesizer built into it. Um, but 
If you want to use it with your own synth, which is what I recommend, then you need to have, you need to set it up how I've got it set up here. And so what it says is input, input mode on. So you have the left side is a carrier and the right side is your modulator. So what I did was I put this onto a aux track and I have my bus one and two coming into it. So bus one is the left and bus two is the right. Because remember in Pro Tools, bus one and two, it's, it's two separate buses and each bus is mono, so it's left and right. And then my synth over here, I've got my synth on here and I've got like a little MIDI line on here and I've got it going out to bus one because this one here says left is your carrier and the synth is the carrier. And then I got my vocal here and that's going to bus number two, which is the right hand side. And the reason why I did it was because this little uh, instructions here says right is the modulator. So now my synth is going into the left side, my vocal is going into the right side, and the vocoder is combining everything together, and then it's making this new sound here. So let's go ahead real quick and put in some drums. I don't know if you can hear my dog breathing. She's got allergies apparently. Poor girl. So she's got like a super runny nose. Her nose is just like leaking. So I had to actually give her, uh, the vet recommended I give her some uh, actual like antihistamines. So I had to crush it up and give her that this morning. Uh, all right, so let's, let's call this drums. And go ahead, I'm gonna put on here, everything turned on, right, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put on here my um, battery 4. I haven't really used battery 4 too much with y'all. Uh, I'm going to use it right now just to show you what battery 4 looks like. This comes with uh, complete if you buy complete. This one comes with complete and I'm going to go in here to fat bloke. So there's that. I got my metronome here. I'm going to go ahead and mute this stuff. Actually, I don't need to mute all these. I just need to mute this one. Hey. Cool. All right. Let's go ahead and let's make sure. Let's go ahead and do a MIDI merge here so we can get everything going on on top of it. I'm going to go ahead and open up everything right here. Ableton Link is in there. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll just keep us because I have plenty of space up here, so why not, right? All right, cool. So I'm going to do that there. Turn this down a little bit. Turn my volume up on my output. Okay. Cool, all right, so I'm gonna just link this, turn this down. Sorry, it's really hard to play from that angle. So we got that there. <clears throat> Turn my hand claps down a little bit. Okay, sweet. So we got that there. I'm not really gonna expand on that too much just because I'm not, this is not about making like a 
a dope drum beat. It's just about kind of getting some stuff done. Let me put Tony in here. Okay, so I got this. Now we can go back and listen to this vocoder. Cool. So let's do this. Let's let's go ahead and put a vocoder on these drums. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new aux channel, stereo aux. I'm gonna call this one drum vocode. And also let's make a instrument track. Let's make it a mono instrument track. I'm gonna flip the order of these here, just so I keep things organized here. I'm gonna also change these to all green. Sweet. And then my drums will be all red, or, or my orange color that I always do. That's good. I changed that color because it was highlighted. Okay. All right. So I got everything set up here. So what I'm going to do is I get my I'm going to get a synth, and we can use any synth we want. I'm going to keep it pretty basic though. Uh, I'll just use vacuum again because it comes with it. Or actually. Uh, Let's use something free. Tyrell N6. This one's a free one from Yuhei. Let's just see what it sounds like. Let's stop everything. Ah, like this Hoover sound called Dyson. That's really funny. Nice. And this one here, I believe I played this in the key of, uh, looks like. E minor. Okay, so I'm playing in the key of E minor. I'm gonna go up here. All right, so we'll just use that sound there. <clears throat> it's not a, a it's not a super interesting sound, but that's okay because <coughs> what we're gonna do. <coughs> excuse me. Is we're gonna be using that in the drums to make a new sound. Excuse me. Let me just cough. All right, better. All right, so we're going to use this with the drums to make this new sound and just kind of a rhythmic drum thing going on here. So Let's go ahead and set my inputs here to bus three and four. And <clears throat> this will be synth two. Come on, dog. You can do it. Go. You can step on that. All right. <clears throat> my drums, drum vocoder. Okay, cool. So this one here will be set for bus three. This one here will be set for bus four. I got the input on my bus, on my, my vocoder here, bus three and four. Now let's go ahead and here, I'm just gonna double click these to kind of put them to, to default state. <clears throat> the reason why they were set like that was because I had copied them over. Now let's take a listen. Oh, I didn't, hold on, I didn't play anything. Let's put this back up. Cool. 
nice. <clears throat> and what I would do here with these drums, I would duplicate this. And have one of them go to my main output. That's essentially how you do that. So now we got that there. And with this one here, take this one out. So you can hear, you can get a pretty cool sound out of these drums here. And, and if you flip through, like what you can do at this point is you can just go through and flip through your presets and get all sorts of different sounds. Obviously, some of them aren't going to sound uh, great just because of the nature of the sound and what's happening with the drums and the chords I'm playing and stuff like that. It's kind of cool sounding. Let's put that down an octave, shall we? <clears throat> so I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to go up to Event, Real-Time Properties. Actually, let's show my real-time properties over here on the left. Real-time properties, click on that. And in here, I don't need that one anymore. Let's transpose this one down. There we go, let's do one more. There we go. I can put this one up an octave. And you can hear just add some nice kind of some kind of texture into that drum. Now in this vocoder here, we've got some uh, some characteristics in here that we can mess around with. <clears throat> Let me just go ahead and mute all this other stuff here. So I can mess around with my frequencies. I can it. This here is like a deesser. It attempts to like DS the sound, controls the release. Can also put a chorus on it. And the cool thing is, uh, this the chorus from Tal is actually really a really good chorus. So. Cool. <clears throat> and that's basically uh, what's up. That's how you can use a free vocoder in Pro Tools to get some vocoded sound going on with your tracks. And it's it's a different vibe from using Auto Tune or something like that <clears throat> to to do this stuff. Cool. So let's keep using this this song here and let's actually dive into some Auto Tune stuff.
So what we're going to do over here is we are going to keep all this, but we're going to duplicate this vocal and we're going to use auto-tune. We're going to use auto-tune and Melodyne on it. And we're going to keep it in the same key and just see how different things work with it. But I also want to show you some, some kind of magical things we can do with it as well. So I've got this down here. We're going to tone evoke, vocal, vocode. And I'm going to drag this down here. Let's put the click track up top. Synth vocoder. I'm just going to make all these ones small and this one big. There we go. And all these can be muted. Awesome. Okay, so we just got this one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to make a MIDI track. MIDI tracks are not mono or stereo, they just are because MIDI is not audio, if you remember that. I'm gonna drag my MIDI down from up there. So I have the same notes here that I was using before. And we're gonna use this later. We're gonna come back to this. We're gonna call this one um, Vocal MIDI. And on this Tony vocal track, we're gonna call this Vocal uh, Tune. We will put on Auto Tune on here. Auto Tune, I've got a couple different versions of Auto Tune tune. I've got one from, I don't have, I just have the UAD one, but in here there's a couple different versions of it. There's uh, Antares Auto-Tune Real-Time, and then there's Auto-Tune Real-Time Advanced and Auto-Tune Real-Time Access. I don't remember what the differences are between this. Just go ahead and just check these out. So here's the real-time one. This one is like an older one. And then, and we can, we can actually play this in with MIDI, which is what I'm going to, where I'm going to show you all how to do. But we also, let me just show you the differences here. Uh, real-time. Access. Here's real-time access. It's like a more, it's a newer kind of version of it. And I believe this one you can get for like a hundred bucks or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. And then I also have this one here, the advanced. Which again, we can play with MIDI. This is more like the... Hello. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> this is more like the um, kind of the advanced version of it before that we were looking at a second ago. It's just a more modern <clears throat> version of it, as far as I, as far as I can do. Yeah, yeah. So here's the advanced version of it. So let's just use the the kind of access version here first. Let's stick it on here. So let's listen to it without it. Make sure we're going to the output. There we go. Hey, check one, two. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check okay. One, so a couple two, things. That's what I'm gonna do right now. First of all, that is needs a lot of work before we start really messing with it too much. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and grab this over here and I'm gonna <clears throat> drag it over here a little bit. And we're gonna try to get rid of some of that hum and stuff. So yeah, let's listen to this hum here for a second. Let's loop this. All right, you can hear all just all the stuff that's going on with that. Let me just go ahead and loop that even faster. Make a smaller loop. There we go. Okay, so first of all, we need to get rid of all that low end, right? <clears throat> so go in here, my low end out of there. Already so much better, but we still have that annoying hum that's up and up on top there. Now, <clears throat> in order to get rid of this, uh, you have to really work some EQ magic, uh, which uh, doing it with something like 
this is, is not super easy. I don't really recommend trying to go in and get rid of it because there's just too many frequencies. And you're going to end up really cutting out a lot of your vocal, like a lot of the part, parts that you want to keep. Now let's keep this over here. Right, and once you make these narrow enough, because if I let this go into my vocal here... Hey, check, one, two, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Hey, check, one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Right, you can still hear all that hum in there. One, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Right, so I don't want, <clears throat> I don't wanna do it like that. That's not the way, that's not the way. This is the way that if you don't have anything, this is the way, this is the only way you have if you really don't have that many plugins, but, I want to show you the actual way you would do this and the actual way you would do this is with um, if you have like the waves I think Joe you got the waves broadcast and I think it probably comes with like X noise or something like that that one's a great plugin that's easy to use um, also I think you mentioned you got the um, isotope stuff so I'm gonna go into my isotopes here And I'm going to use RX6, which is not the newest version of RX, but it's the, it's the one I have. Awesome. And I'm going to click the Learn button. And it's going to get a noise. And it's going to get rid of my noise for me. So if we listen to that, Hey, check, one, two, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Hey, check, one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Right, and I can just take this here and read. Hey, check, one, two. You can hear it gets rid of that noise really well. Hey, check, one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Right, we wanna hey, make sure. Check, one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check, one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Right. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, I just mess with this. I forget hey, threshold goes one, up or down. Two, that's what I'm gonna do. We can uh oh when you've got it in this mode here, we don't have a whole lot we can hey, do check with it. One, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. That sounds good there. Hey, <clears throat> so you can just kind of mess with these controls here. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do. Oops. Hey, check one, two. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, awesome. Check. And that sounds pretty good. Now, what I would do at this point is before I apply auto tune, I've got it sounding hey, check pretty one, good. Two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, You wanna balance two, between. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right, right now. All right, that sounds pretty good right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cut this, because I definitely don't want any of this extra stuff. I just wanted that, that part in the beginning just so I could learn the noise Part. Let me just show you that one more time because <clears throat> I kind of glossed over that. So I'm going to turn my auto tune off the, here for a second. So what you need to do is you need to find a part of the noise that doesn't have you talking. So whenever you're in a situation where you think you've got some noise going on, because I know I've got this nasty hum with this microphone, and it's actually the nasty hum of the microphone is being taken out by OBS. I have a plug-in on OBS that takes out the hum of the microphone, which is actually pretty pretty good. I think. Um, but when I use this microphone to record into Pro Tools, it captures the hum and everything. So what I want to do is I just got like a, a little bit in the beginning, and it doesn't have to be much, just that had that hum in it. And I click on learn here, and you just you just play the hum. And then it captures that. And then you can mess with these controls here to reduce that as much as possible. If I go over here, 
Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, and it pulls them that's out. what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, what two, is up, Staffo? that's How what you I'm doing? gonna do right now. Hey, check. All right, and that's what that's what goes on there. That's what that's what happens. All right. So what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> I am going to get rid of all the extra stuff that I don't want, and I'm going to commit this. So I'm just going to right click on it, commit, consolidate, fine, whatever. Uh, yep, all that stuff there. We've talked about this before. So it will have my track on it if I want to go back and I want to tweak things, but for now. I just want this part here. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do. That sounds great. Okay, so that's that's the part there. And what I'm gonna do, actually, I, I'm just gonna take this up here and stick it on this one here. Let's hear what this one sounds with that. Hold on, let's make a new playlist and put that on there. New playlist, drag this up here like that. Let's see what that sounds like. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's hear that with the old one. So it had that constant hum underneath. So it's more connected. So, yeah. Yeah, that constant sustain is all that low energy that was in there before that's not doing anything for it. So if you want it to be more authentic, like what your voice is, what people would actually be hearing, is this is the one you'd want to use right here. All right, anyway, let's go back here and mute all that and go back to my vocal here. And let's, now let's, let's put the auto-tune on there. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm going to do right now. Now, if I just put the auto tune on here, the regular access auto tune, because I'm not talking. I mean, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, like, there's no melody in my voice. I'm literally just talking. Sorry, I'm the opposite of not talking. I am talking. Ha ha ha. And so we're going to go in here. We're going to go to access. I don't think the access is really going to do a whole lot. <clears throat> Jay the God King. Hi, Jay. Uh, let's put this in the key of E minor, because that's the key we are in. Hey, check one, two, and that's you can what see right now. It's hey, check one, not gonna two, do anything. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Good for hey, you, Jay. Check one. I'm glad two, you have a good beat. That's what I'm gonna do right um, now. Hey, so we got this here, one, and this two, you can see. I'm gonna do. This right isn't now. Hey, gonna do anything. One, two. That's what I'm gonna do right now. This auto tune hey, is not gonna do anything for us, right? Because it's not. We're not. It's nothing to tune, really. We're just talking. So let's go ahead and use a different one here. And we're going to go in here and use the advanced one and see what this one will do for us. If we can get the sound out of this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the MIDI to kind of tune it. And so we're going to put it into key of E, again, key of E minor. Soprano, it's more of an alto tenor type of thing, not super low. And we're gonna we're gonna link up the MIDI part over here into the auto tune to control the auto tune. All right. So the way we do that, let's go to this view over here. And the way we do this is we're gonna go in here to this, the output of our MIDI, and we're gonna go to our Tony Vocal Tune dot cm which is stands for uh, commit and we're going to go here and we're going to auto tune one and that's going to just go into channel one and the reason I know that's where we want to go is because right here my auto tune plugin it says MIDI node is auto tune one so now when we hit play hey check one two that's what I'm going to do right now Hey, let's see if this is actually going to show us. I'm gonna... Let's see, hold on, let's mute this. Not sure if in Pro Tools you have to have something set up. To set this. Let's 
I always forget. I never, I don't really, the problem is I don't really do much of this stuff in, in Pro Tools. I do all this stuff in Ableton Live usually, but we're not, we're not there yet. There we go. That should do it, yeah. Just gonna be my vocal coming through here. Yeah, mute that. Well, let's see, one more thing. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw the auto tune onto this aux channel here. Whoops. Hey. The aux channel. And then, oh, this is not going, oh, hold on. We're not going to the right thing here. There we go. Let's see, and then we'll send this one through. Let's use bus five. Go through bus five. I feel like I'm doing this like a weird kind of way. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two. That's what I'm gonna do right okay, now. Okay, cool. Hey, check one. So now two, we're getting the MIDI here, gonna do but it's still right not really now. doing much, hey, and check. I might be using this incorrectly. I'm not really an auto tune person, especially for talking stuff like this. Hey, check one, two. That's what I'm gonna but do. It's obviously right not doing now. anything, hey, is it? Check one, two. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check one, two, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey, check. All right, well. Oh, auto tune. Not my favorite, especially for, I don't, I don't never use it on vocal stuff like this. So, <clears throat> all right, well, let's do some, let's get some singing stuff then. Let's, let's actually, I don't want to use it on my voice singing. I thought I'd be able to use it on this, but let's use it on who are you? Because you do not want to hear me singing. Duh. Yeah, save it. Oh, does Autotune not allow you to do stereo? Interesting. I mean, I, I, I've, I've never thought about it because I always just put it on mono stuff anyway because I usually stick it on a vocal. Charlie says, oh, remember, always put the auto-tune on a mono channel. And it's, that's good advice. I just I never even thought about it because I always use auto-tune on vocals and so it never would occur to me to put it on a stereo channel. All right, so here's our, our, here's our vo vocal here. And did we figure out, did we decide what key the song is in? So what did y'all say before this, who are you? It's A, a minor? Is that what y'all said before? Who are you? All right, A minor. Who Thanks, Joe. You, All right, we'll be able to hear the auto-tune on this for show. All right, so if we look at our notes over here, Uh, this talks about, it's talking about Melodyne here, but this works for Autotune uh, kind of, and both Melodyne and Autotune, this, uh, this signal um, here, your inserts here. So inserts, you want to have the EQ1 band first, then you want to have your uh, Melodyne or Autotune, and then your compressor, and then your um, another EQ. Now, let's just go through that real quick before we put this in here. Excuse me. So what we have here is here's our signal chain. And the EQ1 band, all we want to do with that EQ, that first one there, is just is just a high pass or a low cut, however, whatever you want to call it. And just cutting out the low frequencies here just to get rid of them all. You heard what was happening with my microphone before. Uh, crazy amounts of, of just low energy in there. So we want to get rid of all that. And it's you know even if the mic even if it was recorded with a, a like a low cut on it, um, 
then it's okay to put it on there again because if it's if it's recorded with it then it's just it's not going to have it anyway so it's not going to kill it you just want to make sure you don't come up too high on it i've got mine set for 137 uh, that might even be a little bit high it depends on the vocal uh, for this vocal it works okay but you you know you might want to have it set for like 90 or something like that and you can just type it in here and and get that set there now the deesser i'm actually going to put it after the deesser i know i don't have the deesser in my list here but the deesser would basically go right after your eq uh, it's just a low cut because the DS is just getting rid of all the sibilances and stuff like that. And you really don't want that stuff. You don't want the auto tune or the Melodyne to be worried about picking up on that. Basically, you want to try to clean up the signal as, as much as possible so that auto tune or Melodyne has a good clean signal to work with. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and let's just throw on auto tune. Now, in this case here, because this guy is singing, uh, the access will work. There we go. And we're going to put this into the right key. It's, it's always a good idea to know your key. So we're going to put it in A minor, like that. And now... Who are you? Who are you, my love? Okay. And you can hear how it's putting the flips in there. Now, these, what I call flips, like the hard, the hard shift to the next note. If anybody who's you know under the age of 25, this is pretty much all you're used to hearing in music. You're used to the sound. But if you remember any music that was recorded before like 1999, or if you listen to a lot of rock, or if you listen, I mean, if you, if you, if you listen to a lot of older music, you're gonna notice a real difference. And this sound, this flip sound, let me, let me bypass this. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right? This guy's not like a horrible, horrible singer or anything like that. It's just he's 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 kind of gliding between the notes. It's not like a I, I can't so I'm not even gonna try to sing it, but it's not like a hard he's not shifting hard between the notes. He's gliding between the notes. So when you put auto-tune on here, what's gonna happen is auto-tune takes it and it locks it from pitch to pitch to pitch. So it's suddenly just going from this pitch to this pitch to this pitch. So let's go ahead and get this auto-tune going again. Who are you? Who are you, my love? All right, and, and it actually, it doesn't sound really crazy until you get to the second part here where you can hear it actually locking in because he's gliding more in that second part. If we change our retune speed over here to slow, Who are you? Who are you, my love? it's gonna it's gonna let those kind of glides come through. Let's put it in medium and see what happens. Who are you? Who And you can see what, what's happening here in the middle is it's showing you what key he's singing, what, what note he's singing, and it's showing you how far out of tune he is. Like you can see how much it's having to work to keep him in tune. It, it, this one also, like the first one sounds okay, the second one medium, I don't like that sound. Uh, and the fast one, it, it's definitely not a natural sound. But again, this is what we're, you know, people are used to hearing here. Uh, if we turn on the Mac humanize, that's going to add in some ir irregularities into it, everything. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Let's here put this up here. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right, you can hear. It doesn't make it really sound more human. I, I'm not a huge fan of anything that says humanize. So this is what the real-time access does. It gives you access to things. It doesn't really change a whole lot of what's going on. Um, I mean, it changes it, but it doesn't give you, sorry, that's not the right word. It doesn't, it doesn't give you access to a whole lot of the properties in here. So it's cool. I mean, I think it's like a hundred bucks or something like that. And for a hundred bucks, it's fine. 
Uh, obviously, for this one here, it's not gonna. We're not gonna. It's not great. So let's go ahead and, and access. Let's get the more advanced ones going on in here. So we'll go over here. Universal audio, real time access, advanced. Auto-tune artist. All right. So I'm going to change my input type to alto tenor because he's he's not really low. Um, we don't need. Let's just do all this stuff here. Now, if you want to get that real kind of T-Pain like auto-tune type of sound, you're going to keep your retune speed to be very very fast. Who are you? Now, if I have my key set incorrectly, listen to what it does. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Hear how it's more flippy? I don't know what the word is. It just, to me, it sounds flippy. It flips around a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to the right key. And I'll lock it in. Minor, there we go. Who are you? Who Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you have it in chromatic, it's just, it's not really going to matter what key. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Because I guess I should explain what's going on here a little bit more. What this is doing is it's locking in certain keys and omitting other keys. So if I put this in... Let's see, it's not, I thought it would show me. Mm. So basically, <clears throat> okay. all these are accessible here, right? So if I cut these out, so the key of A minor is just all of them and I, I would cut out my, my, the black keys on the piano here. So I, I just click them down and make them removed here. Oops. Like this. And then what I could do is I could go in and I can bypass or remove other keys as well. So I can say, all right, I don't want I don't want him to play any I don't want him to sing any G's or, or C's or D's, stuff like this. Uh -huh. Except he's down here. Hold on a second. Let's go down here and just take out some of these notes. Who are you? Who are you, my love? And what that's going to do is it's going to force his voice into whatever it can do, whatever it can force it into. So now it's going to start sounding really strange when I start taking out some of these notes. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right? And you can see once I take out more and more of these notes, and Joe says do like E flat. So let's do E flat minor. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you, my love? And, and the reason why it's being so flippy like that is because he's right on the border of some of these notes that it can, it can go either way with these notes. So this is what it sounds like with autotune just set up and and again you can see like if we have a minor Who are you? it works because that's the right key. Who are you, my love? All right, so we got that there. Now let's go ahead and play let's play in a whole different melody. So what we're going to do is let's get a midi track and we're going to call this one uh, vocal tune I'm going to put a a MIDI clip in there I, I what I did was I highlight highlight highlighted it and I hit option shift 3 to consolidate and that gave me a new clip so I just highlighted where I want to put the clip option shift 3 and it gave me a new MIDI clip now I'm going to go ahead and just do it right here so I can see where the notes kind of change. 
I'm going to go in here to my notes. And we can see, let's use auto-tune to our advantage here. Come on, there you are. And I'm going to take a look at what he's actually playing, singing. Who are you? CBD, okay? So, I mean, CBA. So he's playing CBA. So we're going to go in here. We're going to say, all right, put my... We're going to use eighth notes. And I'm just going to double click on a C. Put it in the right place over here. That goes there. Whoa. Whoa. I'm also going to make these bigger so I can deal with them. If you want to move your keyboard <coughs> up and down, you just hold down the, the claw, control, option, and command on a Mac. And drag it over here like this. Hold down option to drag that over. There we go. Let that over like that. Oh. And I'm going to hold down option, drag these over. And drag this to the end like that. And now. I'm going to go here to my output of this one, and I'm going to make sure it goes into my auto tune here. So, output here, I'm going to go to my Vox Chorus Auto Tune Channel 1. So, it goes into this one here. I'm going to make sure I solo save it so it always plays. And now, let's just take this over like this. Who are you? And then, let's see if I can get this working right. Advanced, MIDI, target notes, there we go. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right, so you can hear. Who are you? Who are you, my love? And I can shift it around using my MIDI. Who Alright, so let's go ahead and have some fun with this. Let's turn the pencil tool on and we're gonna grab this one and go like that and we'll go uh, E minor, right? So it's most or so A minor. Oh, it's all just the white keys, okay. So I was like Who are you? <laughs> and I'll just come down like this. Take this one and drag it over. And let's do even some more craziness. And we'll just go. Uh, is that right? I can't even. There we go. This is gonna sound uh, crazy, but whatever. I do what I want. I'm just putting in these notes super fast speeds. Because I'm crazy like that and I'm Look how crazy I am. I just put I put notes wherever I want. I, I could even like I could even put some some like notes that aren't in the right key. Whoa, Tony, whoa. Calm yourself down. Goodness. You're a madman. A madman. Who are you? Who
All right. So there you go. Don't mess with me. That's what I'll do to your voice in the editing room. <clears throat> so you can pencil in the, the notes like that. I think you could even put in chords. Although we're getting into stuff that I don't really do much. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's put in some chords. Let's get rid of all this stuff. All right, there's our original notes again. Put those back over there like that. And <laughs> let's see here. No, it's just going to be monophonic. So <clears throat> we need more of a. We need more of a vocoder type of thing to get the chords going on. Um, although, if you listen to, uh, what's her name? Um, she had a song called Hide and Seek. Somebody help me out here. Emojin Heap, this one. That song there, I'm not gonna play any more of it because it'll mute that audio. That's so funny. Also, no commercials. I completely forgot that I, uh, I have premium right now. Cool. I like not having commercials. It's pretty dope. Anyway, that Emojin Heap song, Hide and Seek, is is she's using chords, and she's I don't think she used auto tune to do this. Um, I'm pretty sure she used uh, on stage anyway. She used um, a vo a vocal box thing from. Uh, I read an interview about this. It was um. TC Electronic, they have a, a really cool thing. Uh, but let's see if we can put this into a poly, can we do a polyphonic here? Will it let us do polyphonic? I don't remember. Pitch reference, detune, auto key to check. No, I don't see. A polyphonic thing in here. But I did a review once on the. Um, sorry, my drink is full of ginger. And it's all the ginger. All the ginger strands. Are chewy. I didn't expect that. Um, all right. Don't fall. So let me see. Hold on. Let me just see here for a second if I have that plug in somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get to it at some point and show you all that one because it's it's a cool. It's a cool plugin. What happened? Why did my auto tune go away? Oh, huh, because I yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's auto tune. Now, a lot of times, what people do is they use Melodyne and auto tune in conjunction with each other. So let's just go ahead and show you that. So the reason why is because a lot of people just are not good at singing. So let's do this. This guy's actually pretty good at singing, so it's not going to be a huge difference. Um, but 
let's let's just take let's just uh, use it as an example of what we wanted to, if we wanted to do something different with it. Um, I'm gonna keep these notes off here. I'm gonna use Melodyne now. Salamone, Melodyne. Melodyne, what it allows you to do is it allows you to record the audio into the plugin. It keeps telling me that I should update. I know, I know you have an update out. I, you've had this update out forever. Um, but basically, it allows me to record my audio into the plugin, as you saw the other day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go to transfer. That's what we needed to get to get the audio into the plugin. So I hit transfer, and I'm just gonna play it. Who are you? Who are you, my love? All right, and now it puts it in, and there's my notes. So we can see the notes that it's it's playing, and I, with with this one here, and again. I don't, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't really do that much with it, but I think we can get it to show us the key that the song is in. Show note, scale, scale detective. There we go. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Yeah, and it wants it to be E minor, but let's make it A minor. Who So what I did was just, I just clicked on it and told it this is a a a minor, and it it was telling me E minor before it was wrong, and it, these notes could be an E minor as well, um, but uh, we know that they're A minor because of everything else in the song that this program doesn't have access to. Now it's showing me where these notes are on here, and so it's like okay, cool. So now you can see this this is really cool because I can see what's going on a little bit better hold on let me get out of here okay i don't i don't need to see all that stuff right now so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna mouse over here i'm gonna grab this and zoom in and i'm also gonna zoom in a little bit like this now these things here are called blobs this is the technical term for them it is uh, seriously they're called blobs and this blob there's a couple things we're looking at here first of all you have the line through the blob, which is our exact frequency that's going on. And what the program does is it takes that exact frequency and it says, oh, it's basically averaging out around this note and it gives us a blob on that pitch. When it shifts to a different one, it gives us a different blob. And I can take these blobs, I can click on the blobs. And now that I've got this recorded in here, actually, it's Pro Tools is not paying attention to what's in Pro Tools. I could delete this out of Pro Tools and it would still play. Who are you? Who and it would still play because, uh, because it's in Melodyne. Now, I don't want to do that right now. Um, for no reason other than just I like looking at the blobs here on the screen. I mean, I like looking at my waveform here on the screen, but I'm going to bury it behind this window anyway. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can get rid of things I can get rid of this breath down here and I can do a couple of ways the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna keep it but I'm basically just gonna turn it off and I do that by clicking on my amplitude tool here and I just double click it and it basically just mutes it so you've got a couple of tools across the top and let's look in the notes here You got all these different tools here. You got your transfer button, which transfer it records the audio from the track into Melodyne. You got the main tool, your scroll tool, your pitch, your zoom tool. Then you got the pitch tool, and then different pitch tools here: pitch modulation and pitch drift. Then you've got your format, formant tool, and then the amplitude. The the main ones that you're going to be using, at least in the beginning, for messing with your notes is the pitch tool and the amplitude tool. Now, I also want to say this is uh, Melodyne Studio. It is the top version of Melodyne. They're all basically the same. They just This one just has more bells and whistles. Uh, but they all show you the pitch like this, and they all have these tools in them. So if I go over here and I see my, my pitch tool here, I can go in here and I can just say, I can grab these ones here. Let me just zoom in. I can say this one's a little bit high. So if I double click it, 
it'll lock it down. I can lock these directly into the right pitches. And you can hear, you can see he's like a little bit high there. So now if I listen to it, who are you? Who are you, my love? Right? And I can just tune the notes that I want to tune without affecting the stuff between it. Who are you? Who are now you can hear that because I got rid of these ones here in the beginning, it doesn't sound naturally, just kind of coming right in. So I'm going to go ahead and double click them again to bring them back up. Maybe not this one here. Let's get rid of that. There we go. All right. And let me just command Z a few times on here and put these back. Let's listen to it back originally. Put this one back in. Who are you? Who are you? I'm going to tune this one here. I can right click and get my tools up. And just double click it. Who are you? Who are you, my love? And you can hear it's a little bit high. I can hear it. it it's, it's, um, listening to it back and forth like this, it sounds very different to me. Most people are not going to notice this. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right. Now, if I want to take this and shift it around a little bit, I can hold down my option key. Are you mine? Just a little bit there. Are you and it shows me up here, if you look up here, it shows me how sharp or flat it is. You, who are you? Who are you, my love? Right. And if I want to change other properties of his voice, I can highlight all this stuff here and I can go click on like my formant tool and I can. Who You could do this for special effects stuff. Put it back by double clicking it. And we could adjust like the timing and stuff like that. So I could go in here and use these here to adjust my timing. This is my time tool here. I can move things around. Can we? There we go. Hold down option to get it off the grid there. Move this around. Who are you? Right, I can even adjust the, the time between the notes. There we go. Click that up and down. Who are you? I can make it slide around even more. Who are you? Alright, so you can do all this like stuff. Obviously, this is making it sound worse rather than better. So you wouldn't really wanna obviously you don't wanna try to make it sound worse. Or do you? Alright. But there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Now, one thing is that this software is not perfect. So you might wanna like if you're looking at this, you're like, I don't think these notes are all correct. Like for the most part, it got these pretty good, but you might say, you know what, I, I don't think these notes are all correct. It looks like something interesting is going on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and grab my zoom tool. I'm gonna zoom in. And see how there's like a, a ridge right here? It looks almost like the envelope shifts there. So I'm gonna grab my, my, my separation tool here. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna just double click. Okay, it didn't really do anything there. Let's go over here and see what happens. Let's separate these. See how that shifted the pitch? Well, it's because the notes are actually, there are separations in here that, that the software didn't really pick up on for whatever reason. So if I want to take this one here, let's shift these around like a little bit. There we 
we go. Just dial that in. I'm gonna get my zoom tool back again. There we go. I'm not in love with the way that uh, Melodyne does the zooming, but it is what it is. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right, and I can adjust these individual notes here. Learning how to do all this stuff takes a while. It's not something that happens overnight. You have to practice with Melodyne a lot. Um, if we wanted to sound more robot-y, I can go in here to my pitch modulation tool and just highlight all the stuff, Command A, and uh, double-click it, and it takes out the modulation in the middle. Who are you? Who are you, my love? <laughs> hear, hear that? Now, I might not want to take out everything in here, some of these like flips and stuff like that, so let's separate these out. Let's separate this out. Uh, let's keep that. So let's take, let's do these. I'm holding down shift. I'm going to double click them. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right, and you have, like, you have exact control over everything. It's really cool, actually. Who are you? Who So you can get in here, you get really exact with it. But what you can't really do is you can't do all the flippy stuff. So that's where people use, uh, you can't do all the, like the, 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 the auto-tune sound. And that's where people will use both at the same time. So we might get in here and get this Melodyne in here. And let's put auto-tune on here. Let's go, um, let's use the classic auto-tune version. Universal audio. There's a classic button in here. And the advanced one, classic, oop. And then put into the right key, A minor. Retune speed all the way up so it's fast. Who are you? Who are you, my love? Right, if you want the flips in it, you need auto-tune to really do that correctly. Who This is auto-tune. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's how you would use Melodyne and auto-tune in conjunction with each other. Now, let's go take a look. I'm gonna turn the, I'm gonna take them both off of this track because I don't really, or, what's going on? Oh, my mouse, my mouse just died. Hold on a second, where's, no, no. Did my computer just, Autotune. Autotune is the name of the plugin. And my computer just froze. Huh. Hold on one second. Oh, there we go. Wait. Oh, weird. <clears throat> huh. Suddenly, everything just stopped working on my computer. That was really... Huh. Okay, anyway. Let's see. We're still we're still going. Okay, good. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to take off my auto-tune plugins on here. <clears throat> no insert here. And the camera... Oh, there we go. Sorry, I flipped my camera, my camera protector down. Um, all right, so to answer your question, Gorilla Pimp, because I, um, I, do, I do not make hip-hop. <clears throat> to answer your question before, I don't know if you could hear me or not, that's Auto-Tune is the name of the plugin. The company is called Antares. <clears throat> uh, the other plugin I was using a second ago is also, it's uh, Melodyne. So <clears throat> that's from a company called Celimony. There are other pl uh, plugins out there in the world. Um, who else makes another one that I have? Isotope has Nectar. Do I have Nectar on here? Yeah, Nectar 2. And Nectar 2 has this pitch editor in here. <clears throat> Melodyne, oh, here. Hmm. 
Melodyne. <clears throat> and that's Melodyne stuff. Uh, actually, here, let's just go to their website. There we go. Boop. Melodyne. The company is called Celimony. And then there's Autotune <clears throat> from Antares. <clears throat> cool. And Autotune actually just started this um this like uh, subscription service which how much does that cost? Twenty four a month? Mm. It's a bit it's a bit high, I think. But you can also just buy it. You don't have to, I don't think you have to subscribe to it. There's like a version where you can buy it as well. So, <clears throat> but my recommendation is if you, oh, okay, the Autotune Artist is pitch correction for live performances. Oh, interesting, okay, cool. And the Autotune Pro, all right, which I don't have in here right now. So, Auto Key. Interesting, cool. Yeah, there's a few different things in here. Uh, creative tuning effects, all right, EFX uh, Plus, which again, I don't have as well. So maybe you can get some cooler, like more auto-tuning sounds out of this one here. <clears throat> but there's the two main ones, and the one I'm gonna show you right now is uh, Nectar here. And Nectar, again, it's it's very similar to Melodyne. Um, what you do is you hit the you hit the record button. Who are you? Who are you, my love? All right, and then you can go in here and it shows you all your pitches and stuff like that. And you can see it's a little bit different from the other one. Whoa, whoa. I was just using. Um, it sounds good. It doesn't sound as good as Melodyne. Uh, it doesn't, I, I'm not as much of an expert with it as with Melodyne, but you can see you can just double click on the notes, you can highlight all your notes, and now... Who are you? Who are you, my love? I can use my scissor tool to cut, cut things, cut things, cut things. So... See this? So it's 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 similar. Now the cool thing about Nectar, I believe Nectar is actually pretty cheap, and it comes with the other stuff as well. Nectar is like a vocal effects uh, package, and it comes with. If we take a look at this here, let's go in here to Nectar Two. So if in here, if you take a look at this, it comes with. Uh, you got a compressor, a gate, a deesser, saturation harmony stuff. So you got some neat stuff. You got an EQ in here as well. <clears throat> so you have some neat stuff in here. Um, I actually prefer to use all this stuff like, separately, but if you don't have anything for your vocals and you just want to get something to kind of kickstart your vocals, Nectar is not a bad place to go to. Um, all right. And then Waves has Waves Tune. And there's one that comes with Logic. If you use Logic as well, it's okay. Um, it's not amazing. But if you're really like, I recommend Auto Tune and Melodyne. All right, so let's take a look at what I did the other day over here in the second chorus. Let's just listen to it real quick. You hear how I put the harmonies in there, right? Remember how I did that? Let's just go through that again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and unhide this one. And let's see if this will actually work. The reason why you need to always make sure you commit your auto-tune tracks is because it doesn't always, or your Melodyne stuff, is because it doesn't always come back correctly. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna deactivate this one. 
<clears throat> and I'm gonna activate this one here and let's see if it actually works out. It did, okay, so the Melodyne retained its information. Great. So um, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna turn this one off. And I put these, these are in kind of the wrong order here. Hold on a second, let me put this deesser before the Melodyne. There you go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna re-record this stuff in here and just show you how I did it from scratch. So I'm gonna hit transfer button and we're gonna go. So it's just recording in right now. I'm gonna let it record the second one in as well. So we have these in here. Whoa, that did not work at all, did it? Let's do that again, shall we? I do not know why that happened. What I'm gonna do in order to force it to work, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna get rid of Melodyne. I'm going to reinstantiate re it. I'm going to assume that that happened because I already had some data in there. So let's go ahead and do this again. What are you doing, Melodyne? Interesting. Wow, all right. This is an interesting problem. It's not detecting my Melodyne at all. Oh, I know why. Ha, that's so funny. I'm an idiot. There we go. There was nothing to record. Ha ha, just kidding. All right, let's do that again. Oh, I moved everything around at some point. There we go, a little bit. All right, let's do this one more time. <clears throat> I'm gonna mute this because I don't, I don't want to hear that again. I'm so sick of hearing that. <clears throat> Transfer. Cool. Who are you? Who are you? Doesn't matter if it's muted or not, it's recording it because the mute button is after everything. Remember that. So the mute button's after everything so we can record it in. And if it's not in the right place, rhythmically we can just move it around. Okay, so now let's mute this one here. Let's listen. Okay, cool. So now we have these in here, and what we want to do is we want to make a harmony out of this. Now we don't need everything. Okay, we don't need these. So I'm going to keep them in here just in case later on I decide that I do want them but I'm just gonna leave them right there. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna grab my note separation tool. Actually, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Let me get rid of this stuff here. And let's listen. I can double click up here. Who are you? My love. 
And I don't want that my love part. I don't want that stuff in there. So cut this out here. Who are you, my love? Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. Who are you? I'm actually gonna cut. A little bit sooner. Cool. And I can deal with that later on. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff in here. This one as well. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to take everything and we're going <clears> to <throat> pitch it up. We're going to create a harmony. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and solo out these two, the vocals, without everything else. Okay, you can hear it just gets louder there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one down. And then I'm going to pitch these up. And so we did this the other day, so I kind of know how much to pitch it up by. I'm going to pitch everything. I'm going to put it up to a C, uh, E. And this one here. And I'm just doing that right now. I'm going to tweak it a little bit in a second. Oh, who are you? Who are you, my love? Cool. Sounds pretty good there. Oh, who are you? Who are you? Okay. So you can see when I moved it down, it kept the kind of where it was the original. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Pull this down here like a little bit. Oh yeah, the note dragging sound. I love that sound. I think it's hilarious. Oh, who are you? Who are you, my love? Cool. Oh, who are you? Who are you? Nice. You this down a little bit. All right. <clears throat> and now let's change the formant in here. I'm going to do them all. You can change it to this. Or you can make it deeper. Just want to make it mix into the song. Oh, who are you? Who are you? All right, and because it's so far in the background, you're not going to really notice that it sounds completely unnatural. Obviously, if you solo just this out, it sounds weird by itself. But nobody's ever going to hear it by itself. And then I'm going to. Put it out to the sides using my uh, sound toys micro shift here. Right? 
and there you go. It's a nice little nice little thing you can do here. <clears throat> uh, using another way to use Melodyne. It's not just the normal normal way. Now, one of the cool things about uh, Celimony and Melodyne is that they actually have a lot of really good tutorials on their website uh, that I recommend you check out. Um, and here, if you go to, I think you go to help, and Melodyne, and oh, Rich, yep, got some good tips from him, and how to use Melodyne for other stuff, and then, <clears throat> but some really neat things in here that you can do with it. Melodyne 5 is out. I I, uh, I'm still using Melodyne 4, but Melodyne 5 is really cool. It's got some really neat stuff in it. You can get rid of the breaths and the S's and the T's and stuff like that. <clears throat> and what'll, what's neat about it is it actually, if you're doing a lot of like with vocal work, it'll take the breaths and it won't, and the T's and the S's and stuff like that, and it won't change the pitch on them. It'll change the pitch on everything else, but not the T's and the S's and stuff like that and the breaths, which is a, a really neat thing. It's, it's actually really cool. If you're doing a lot of like, especially if you're doing a lot of pop music and music where you need <clears throat> to uh, to do a lot of like pitch correction. All right, and that's what's up. That's what's up. I think that's a good place to stop.